guys, so I don't know if you can get me in the shot. Uh, so I think the secret's out. Um, really, one of the best things you can do for your own uh, garden uh, is to compost. You can buy the, the, the store-bought stuff, which is, you know, that's fine. It's, uh, it's the next best thing, but making your own is absolutely the, the, the best option you have. Um, you use kitchen waste, leaves, wood chips, uh, manures, uh, coffee grounds, spent brewery grains, all of that. Uh, today, all I have is some manure as a green ingredient or nitrogen rich uh, ingredient um, and some leaves uh, as my carbon uh, rich material. So basically, you want to look at uh, your nitrogen as uh, it's going to be the lifeblood of the microbes that are um, that are breaking down the carbon rich materials, which is going to be their food. Um, basically, I, I guess like a like a complex sugar um, is w what the carbon is. Um, so yeah, with enough manure, you'll have you know plenty of uh, of um, I guess material for the um, to, to exist in the microbes' bodies. Uh, just like, you know, blood meal is, is high in uh, nitrogen. That's because it's, it's uh, the lifeblood of any animal. So anyway, let's uh, cut the chit chat, finish this, this pile off. I only got a couple of totes full because I wasn't gonna fill my entire, uh, the entire bed of my truck up with manure. That's not really a very pleasant experience. Uh, now I've got a lot of other things in this pile. Um, uh, what did I put in here? Oh, well, just like grass clippings and uh, and this manure is very wet, so I probably won't water too much. But uh, you know, I've got some kitchen scraps in here. Uh, And it, well, and leaves and wood chips is about, about it. You know, if you can get more materials, if you can source more materials, uh, that's great. But for whatever reason, the Starbucks in my area don't want to save, uh, save their spent grounds anymore, or at least the ones that are close to me. And I'm not gonna drive all the way across town in this big ass truck to, uh, to go find some coffee grounds. Just doesn't really make make much sense. Some people are probably upset with me that I drive a big, big gas guzzling truck like this, but you know, hey, that's it's kind of required for for work. Uh, and I'm not gonna make you watch all of this, but uh. All right, now I'm gonna kind of fork that into the pile because I don't want it to just be really in actual pronounced layers. It'll get kind of mixed in. Probably out of the shot by now. All right. Okay. These uh, hay forks really, really are good for uh, for shoveling stuff like this. Uh, an actual shovel would not work here. Well, maybe for the manure, but not to turn compost. Of course, I won't be turning this compost, as you can imagine. Getting this off the pile would be a bit of a pain. So this isn't one of those, uh, I'm gonna turn this on a regular basis type things. This is gonna be a, kind of just let it, let it do its thing. When it gets to a point where I'm happy with it, as far as how far it's broken down, I'll go ahead and spread it because you know, the smaller particulates are gonna settle in any kind of uh, you know, overhead irrigation or precipitation, rain, whatever. Um, but yeah. You want to get any trash out of your leaves that your buddies may have uh, raked up when they, when they brought them over to you. Mm. 
Okay. Now, one more. I'm just gonna keep layering these until I'm out of manure. So. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you that when I started gardening, or well, when I started gardening organically, I thought I was doomed to the clay soil uh, and hard rocks that are all under here. But I tell you, man, compost and mulch has made all the difference. All the difference. It is, by and large, just far beyond anything I you know, would have ever imagined as far as the health of my soil and uh, the water holding abilities and, and being able to, to protect those microbes, soil life, that's, uh, that's perfect, you know? Here in, here in North Texas, the sun, sun is brutal. Probably, you know, I guess your folks in like Phoenix and you know New Mexico and stuff like places like that can probably relate. Midsummer, it is just brutal. Uh, so, and and we do tend to get rains. It's like all or nothing. So it's either just pouring down constantly, or you know we have six month drought. So uh, last year was a great example of that six month drought. The bed right here where my truck's parked, and yes, this is my main bed for now. Um, what, I mean, we put these wood chips down midsummer and it did not rain again uh, until fall. And uh, I actually think that kind of helped to kill off most of the, the perennial grasses that were here. The, you know, the, the grasses are really the problem as far as what one would call weeds. Uh, you know, the, the annuals that blow in, those are easy to pull, no problem. Um, but, I'll put these. Yeah, but the annuals that, that blow in, those are easy to pull, but it's, it's these annual grasses, the couch grass, and uh, I think some of this is like maybe winter rye or something that comes back every year. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not an ugly grass, it's just, I don't want it here. It doesn't actually look like a weed. Um, and I'm sure people, you know, some people pay good money to have this this type of weed in their uh, in their lawn but I don't want it here I want to grow food and lots of it so I could probably take a couple more trips to get manure uh, I don't really know that, that I'm gonna do that right now uh, but we'll see Oh, I'm getting poo on my hands. Uh, trying not to spill the manure off the forks, but sometimes you just gotta, gotta do what you can. And I'm gonna pause this here in a second because I've got some uh, some kitchen scraps that I forgot to bring out. And they need to go in. Oops. I didn't write you. What was the chick's name on the game? Chung Lee. Chung Lee wins. Hi yeah. Look at it. <laughs> oh guys. You know when you garden by yourself. Gotta be your own entertainment.
so yeah let's uh okay so still end up with a bunch of shit in my truck And this should heat up pretty quickly. It was already at about 120 uh, when I started with this batch of manure. So, it should heat up pretty quickly. All right. Sorry about all the grunting and groaning, y'all. This stuff's heavy. <laughs> Either that or I'm just old. Maybe a little bit of both. Get some of your green manure to the outside of the, or your green materials to the outside of the pile. It's a little large piece of, oh jeez, come on. Piece of concrete that I don't want in there. Now if you've been following along, you probably noticed that a lot uh, that's mainly because I want to get that slab of concrete out of here, but I don't know where to dump it, where I can take it to, to have it recycled. And you can't just dump stuff on the side of the road. You gotta, you know, dispose of it properly. Or they'll hit you with a nice hefty fine. And that, I tell you, I cannot, cannot do that right now. And that's gonna be it for this pile, or at least for now. I'll continue to add to it, uh, but I'll show you, you know, when it heats up, how it uh, how it's coming along. Oh, geez, come on, man. Scraps, but I wanted to go ahead. I thought I thought there was more, but apparently not. There's quite a bit of uh, eggshells here. It's gonna be a lot of calcium. And no, that wasn't. That was just water. That wasn't uh, anything gross. And Ew, yucky. Yes, y'all would hear me make lots of weird voices. It's just me being goofy, that's so. all. A little bit at this point, and, uh, and then finish the pile off. All right, so. That's gonna be it for now. I've got a couple other things I need to run and do. Uh, but yeah, that'll heat up. I'm looking for around 160. Um, you know, a lot of people say anything higher than that, you start to kill off your fungal life. And I'm sure that's true. Uh, you're also gonna go anaerobic. That is the only problem that I really have with getting any higher than 160. Uh, the fungal life, uh, you know, I, I mulch with wood chips, so there's plenty of fungus in there. And if you ever plant brassicas, you're actively killing your fungal life. It, you know, people think that brassicas have uh, a mycorrhizal association. They absolutely do not. They, in fact, um, they kill, actively kill. Their, their roots exude some sort of uh, fungicide. If you liked the video, like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And uh, I'll show you guys, you know, just everything that I'm doing back here, uh, trying to get ready for the season, which is coming up. Um, we don't really have any, any frosts or freezes in the 15 day forecast. Um, and you know, that, that would get us a little bit beyond our average last frost date uh, here in zone 8A, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Um, but 
you know, they're, they're, you're, you're kind of, I'll probably plant a few tomatoes out um, sometime, you know, later on this week and just keep some cover on hand uh, and get them off to a good start. But uh, my silly self decided to build this compost pile right at the beginning of where <laughs> where my tomato bed was supposed to be. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, let's hope this compost heats up really quick and does its thing and I can get it moved. Uh, so yeah, like and subscribe, ask questions, comments, whatever. I like to talk. I want to talk to y'all. So take care.